Reading now a presentation, a joint presentation by uh, by partners in the Ariadne project, uh, Dimitris Kavrilis from uh, the Digital Creation Unit Athena Research at Andalenia Fionzi, uh, Johan Finn and Olaf Olson from the Swedish uh, Research Data Service, Achille Felicetti Fracon Colucci from um, uh, PIN in Italy, the, the coordinators of the Ariadne project, and Sebastian. Uh, Qui from uh, um, uh, the uh, Deutsche Archaeologists Institute. Uh, so the name of the presentation is Integrating Data for Archaeology, and uh, it starts really for the idea is really to present the approach and the, uh, that uh, uh, the Ariadne project takes to integrate <coughs> the diverse archaeological data from different institutions, different sources, etc. Typically, uh, traditional projects are focusing on aggregating data from a single format or system, provide users with a unified interface, improve search and retrieval, and improve retrieval semantics through specialized metadata schemas. Ariadne goes, however, one step further. The idea of Ariadne is really to bring together data from uh, very different uh, uh, sources and produce a certain level of data integration. In order to do that, Ariadne has developed uh, its own uh, registry schema called the Ariadne Catalog Data Model, intended in order to be able to uh, document and provide metadata, adequate metadata for uh, digital resources that relate to uh, archaeology, uh, modeling the domain information. Uh, it uses a curation aware aggregator in order to enrich information using the above model, and it seeks to improve user experience through more substantial and powerful queries. Uh, well, this has been done, hasn't been done much before because uh, of the complexity, performance issues that sometimes are associated with this kind of uh, endeavor, and also uh, the need for specific domain knowledge. And Ariadne actually provides a good uh, case, a use case, just because of archaeology being a well defined uh, and rich discipline. Uh, standard aggregation systems are insufficient, that's why Ariadne decided to build its own infrastructure rather than depend on something that is already out there from the digital humanities or other fields. So the idea is the flexibility needed to be able to ingest diverse and heterogeneous data, because data sometimes will come in the form of you know, just an Excel or a CSV uh, file. Sometimes it is uh, in the form of an XML uh, file or an RDF uh, uh, file. Uh, to be able to handle each data stream independently and according to its requirements, adapting aggregation, validation, and enrichment workflows as uh, needed. Uh, here, I will just mention very briefly, because I so happen to be sort of a project leader for the digital creation unit on the project, we do follow uh, an OAE's compatible approach, that is uh, open access, uh, uh, open archive information systems uh, standard on how we sort of think about uh, uh, this infrastructure. Uh, and finally, we need to add new curation services easily and on demand. What kind of curation service? I mentioned a couple of examples uh, as I go along. Complexity. We need to be able to decouple services complexity with a microservice oriented architecture. The idea is to plug in services <coughs> for specific purposes. For instance, geolocation. A specific service can be plugged in uh, at need. And there's several different services like that. And use this loosely collect connecting services in a highly scalable environment. And that determines the kinds of technologies that one needs to use in order to be able to provide this scalability. Because we're talking about millions of, uh, uh, of data, uh, data points in this case. Um, and domain knowledge, well, the idea is to integrate the domain knowledge, the ACDM, the Ariadne a catalog domain model into the infrastructure uh, to make extensive use of the main thesauri, for instance, uh, the art and architecture thesauri that is being used in uh, the cultural heritage domain uh, for a variety of uh, vocabulary control uh, purposes, and be able to label each resource accordingly using these vocabulary resources, these authorities, and finally create specialized microservices for content according to uh, domain needs. So the data integration overall architecture looks like this. Uh, there's a repository uh, data that can come in the system, there's Excel sheets that can be ingested, there's the Ariadne register again that is ingested for the uh, enrichment now and uh, consolidation of data management. And this goes into a, a system called uh, Metadata and Objects Repository called MORE that provides for validation services, for cleaning services, semantic enrichment services with vocabularies, with relocation, with uh, geonames, etc., and integration. 
and the outputs for this uh, can be an RDF store, uh, an RDF store that there's another system that is being built in order to be able to provide uh, a hugely sort of uh, enriched semantic services uh, on the basis of uh, Ariadne data to be able to process this with ontologies, etc., based on CDOC CRM and extensions to the CDOC CRM that uh, partners in the Ariadne project, uh, uh, like uh, people in fourth. Uh, uh, have uh, uh, developed. So this is another output and this provides the ground for integration experiments in which people can, so for instance, issue Sparkle queries on the data and try to do clever stuff in finding uh, connected uh, information. There's an elastic search uh, uh, interface that uh, feeds and uh, um, uh, powers uh, the Ariadne portal, uh, which is uh, you know port portal dot Ariadne dot dash infrastructure dot eu, uh, and uh, finally uh, archive the data for uh, long term digital uh, preservation. Uh, each resource is assigned a unique and persistent identifier, is also a, a unique resource identifier. Every resource has an RDF representation according to the schema that Ariadne has established. And curation microservices, the ones I mentioned, the loosely coupled services, services such as geonormalization, for instance, identify, extract, normalize places and coordinates. We sort of convert everything to WSG84 in order to have a, a unified scheme for uh, geo coordinates. Geocoding using geonames, thesauri mappings using subject terms and uh, object names and what have you, uh, to, and periods, etc., etc., using the art and architecture thesaurus. Temporal normalization, identify, extract, normalize dates. Using gazetteers, for instance, there's a die in Dodge's Geological Institute uh, gazetteer that we're uh, linked to. Historical and ancient claims identification to the Pelagios uh, set of uh, 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 infrastructure and, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, authority. And finally, temporal information mapping to the period. Uh, I've got a mistake here. Period. O, um, uh, authority for uh, um, temporal for archaeological periods. So. Data integration is based on subject, space, time, and resource type. Uh, we model individual information resource types, <coughs> collections, bibliographic reports, databases, and the different content types that are modeled. We identify each resource type during ingestion. This is linked then uh, using put all, uh, for instance, related heterogeneous resource types under uh, the same collections according to their relationships. And uh, uh, we integrate thematically by using AAT. Uh, IAT terms act as a glue when combined with spatial and temporal information to allow us to do search and to search stuff using uh, the chronological criteria, uh, spatial criteria, and other cultural criteria. Uh, we can semant do semantic expansion of terms. So, for instance, we've got an arrow, <coughs> geographic or chronological term, uh, or you know, sub period, we can sort of use these relationships in order to be able to expand. Uh, and uh, there's an expansion of multilingual terms that facilitates cross language search without requiring automatic translation. I mentioned uh, WSG84 for coordinates, which is a standard uh, way of dealing with coordinates, and all resources to temporal information are normalized according to ACDM dates, which takes into account periods, period names, and supports ISO date format. So there's a diagram here, I don't have time to. How much time have I got? About three minutes? Uh, yes, yes. Ah, good. Okay. So uh, this is uh, shows this diagram shows uh, the curation life cycle for subject terms. Uh, uh, I'm not going into the detail of it. I mean, if you want, we can sort of come back in discussion. And uh, oh, if I got a couple of minutes, then I will sort of say something about it uh, by reading it and reading it with you. So we start with AAT terms. These AAT terms are fed into uh, the more uh, repository. We've got native subjects that come from the data sets. Uh, these through a vocabulary mapping tool, they also, through mappings, come again into more. Uh, and then, uh, well, what we do here is uh, we sort of coordinate these with Excel sheets, XML files, whatever comes us from the data through the registry, records that are, have their metadata. This metadata might also have uh, these, uh, these uh, subject terms in that. And then these are consolidated anymore, and then uh, they are exported, converted into ACD with JSON files in which uh, uh, we have provided service, the derived subjects, broader generic subjects, native subjects. Let me just explain for a second what we do in this case. Imagine that we've got one particular subject, might be an object uh, name, uh, for one particular kind of artifact. What we do is we keep the original name in the data stream that we export then in the JSON file. So we've got the original name is always there because this is really the reliability of our data depends on that. However, 
What we do is we enrich this using a standardized term that we have, may have matched through using the AET hierarchy. And the other thing that we do, we also provide narrow, uh, broader terms so that we know that uh, uh, if we've got a broader you know, sort of uh, object kind, uh, then we can search these to the broader. That's, that's the way that we do it. We use semantic expansion uh, and subsumption in order to provide enriched uh, uh, capabilities for retrieval. Because sometimes people would see with a broader term, sometimes with a narrower term. So this is more or less what uh, Dimitris' uh, presentation was and all this uh, team of my colleagues. Uh, I'm afraid I will not be able to answer all your questions, but if you have any that I might be able to venture, myself or Frank over here might be able to. Thanks. Uh,